at that, look at that domination right there, huh? What's up, y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. Now, before we get too deep into today's video, because it's all gonna be about spraying and praying, like literally, like for those of you that have a spray addiction or would like to develop a spray addiction, this video is 100% for you. But I just wanted to show you, this stuff here that looks like turf type tall fescue, <laughs> it's actually Kalinga. Um, this area over here stays constantly wet, and because of what we're gonna talk about today with this, it actually gets tons and tons of fertilizer, humic acid, like just so much gets spilled over here and emptied out. And I've actually kind of created a nice lawn of Kalinga. So <laughs> it's an experiment and um, I didn't really mean for it to come out this way, but it's pretty cool. I would not recommend this for an entire lawn, but it's pretty soft laying it right here if I'm honest. I mean, look at it. It looks like turf type tall fescue. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it continue to uh, do its thing. But anyway, we're here today to talk about this right here. So in my video that I released on Friday, and I'm not sure when I'm gonna release this one, hopefully maybe tonight or Saturday, but uh, when I did it, I, I talked about this Easy Flow, and I've teased it a couple times over the last, oh, several weeks, because I've had it and been messing with it. And a few of you guys were like, all right, just show us how it works. Now listen, I'm gonna show you how this works, and I'll give you links below to get one, but I can't support it. In other words, a lot of times when I start talking about a new product or something, I, I like to try to give support, like teach you how to use it, how to put it together. This is not something I can give support to because there's a learning curve here, and when I say that, a frustration curve, but it's well worth it to get through it. It's well worth it to mess with it because it is a lot of fun. So I'm gonna show you a lot of things that are a lot of fun today, and I'll give you links below if you wanna pick it up, and then I'll even show you a better setup that I have. This is my original setup. You can probably see I have some stains on the wall over there. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. But I have a setup that I did in the backyard that's actually a lot cleaner, and it was my second setup, so I'll show you that as well. But in a nutshell, let me explain what this thing does. So I actually keep it up in here, and um, let me, here. Yeah, see that? I forgot to let the pressure out of it. Um, so again, it's messy. Okay, so essentially what this is, is it's like a, I don't know, what is that? Like a, an IV for your regular hose. And in this case, I'm using just a regular nozzle there, but you could put an irrigate, a sprinkler on the end of that or whatever. But basically it injects fertilizer from, or whatever you put in here, humic acid, dethatch, whatever you wanna put in there. You put it in this tank and it actually injects it into the line, so that way you can spray it right out of here. Woohoo! look at that, it's like a soda fountain. Holy cow. So essentially what happens is water is pushed out of this one and into this tank, which then builds pressure and then forces whatever's in the tank up through this one, and that's what injects into your hose line. Now, the thing about it is though, it's highly concentrated in the beginning, but as you cycle through this, more water's in here, and then the concentrate itself is watered down. And so I don't have a better way to explain that, but there's no math to be done here. I mean, I guess there could be, but it's it's literally starts at super concentrate, and immediately water is pushed in, concentrate is pushed out, but as more water's pushed in, the concentrate becomes more and more diluted in that tank. So what you spray out in the beginning is much more concentrated than what you're gonna be spraying out, you know, 10 minutes later. Probably make better sense once I start spraying, once I fill it up. Now this one's ready to be empty, but it's never gonna be 100% water. It's just not, um, it's just not gonna work that way. So I always take whatever's left in here and pour it on one of my palms. And again, you can see I'm not going to great detail on this. I'm really gonna just expect you guys to kind of figure some of this out from just watching what I'm doing. So I think the first thing we're gonna do today is go with something pretty simple. We'll do a little RGS. Now you can put anything in here that you want. You can put in microgreen, you can put in dethatch, you can put in 1801 green punch, you can mix them all together. This thing doesn't clog up. That's one of the things to know. I'm just going with RGS today because it'll be nice and simple. But again, you can put anything in here you want. Just know if you put anything in with iron, you gotta control where that goes. So if you got iron-based materials in here, you don't wanna put this onto a sprinkler because if the sprinkler goes over onto your driveway, it'll stain it. RGS though, no chance of that happening, so. 
So you wanna make sure you fill it up all the way, otherwise it'll take a little bit longer to build pressure. So I just turn it to the fast setting. The out is green and the in is blue. And it's never hard to remember that because just I just take the darker hose and put it on the blue, which is a darker color than green. Well, unless it's my lawn, then green's always darker than blue, but you know, we won't, uh, we won't hold you to that. Okay, so there's the most simple way to do it. Filled that up with RGS, got everything hooked up. Now, in this part up here, um, there is a washer, like a rubber washer you can put in there, which increases the flow, which makes this tank empty faster. And I put the, I think I put the white one in. Let's see if I can find video on that. I shot a whole bunch of video on this. But either way, that goes up there. So you just basically turn on your hose here. And let it kind of pressure up. You can see the weeds grow really well back here. Also, there was a filter or strainer that came on there. I cut that off because I followed John Perry, which John Perry's never met a filter that he wanted to keep. So John Perry always cuts every filter off, so so did I. It's a good thing John Perry's not a smoker. He'd have died a long time ago. Now it's gonna take it a little while to filter its way through the hose, but you can see, watch. Can you see the flow? Watch. So what's happening is water's coming through here and it's going in here and it's pushing down into the tank to pressurize it and then water's being forced up the other one and out through this clear one and that's why you can see it's all dark brown now because of the fact that there's RGS in there already. So you can see every time I turn this on, see that? See it's starting to flow through there? Now it'll take it a little bit of time to get out and get into this stream here and you'll see it turn brown. Let's just give it a second to come through, you'll see it. And actually one of the things you can do if it's not coming through fast enough, just turn it to one of the settings there. I can already see it turning brown, but turn it to one of the settings there. See that? That sprays out more of a stream. Woohoo! Look at that. It's like a soda fountain. Holy cow. Can you see that? Oh my word. Look at that. Oh boy. That's beauteous. I don't want to waste it and blow the whole load out real quick because remember, it's coming out the most concentrated in the beginning and it waters down as it goes. So you want to go ahead and try to conserve it a little bit especially if you're going to spray a lawn space like I'm going to do here. So I'm going to go to a different setting. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Pretty, pretty. Look at that. Ain't that gorgeous? Holy cow. Shazam. Now this is putting plenty of water down. So even if you're using like fertilizer or anything, you're not going to burn anything here. You're not going to get it too heavy. There is so much water coming out with this. You're fine. Eat this thing. I'm gonna show you a better setup in a minute. Come on. Now I don't have to care so much about what this is doing because it's RGS, it's not gonna change the color of the lawn, but I do wanna try to get it as even as possible. Give the palm a little squirt. Oh yeah. Make sure you hit that domination line a little extra heavy there. Look at that, huh? Kablamo. Yes. So nice. So I found that it takes about 20 minutes for that to run fairly clear. So that's just me, my water pressure at my house. Yours might be different. So, but I give it about 20 minutes before I change it out. And usually it ends up being 40 because I'll come out here and spray multiple times a week. And you could see, I mean, you could use up like all of your supplies really, really quick. So, but about about 20 minutes and, and you should be good to dump it out wherever you like. Now, that's not the only way to use it though. Let me show you a couple other little modifications that you can make. By the way, that's like 1000 square feet over there. And you see how fast I sprayed that. So super fast, but I wouldn't recommend this strategy. If you had a lawn over 5,000 square feet, it might be a little annoying to spray it, but anything under 5,000 square feet, you could actually do all of your fertilization this way. So again, you have plenty of water going down with it, even though it looks massive when it's coming out, it is 
but there's a lot of water coming in with it so you're not going to hurt anything and it's pretty much watered in um, but if you're like me I sometimes stand out here for an hour remember I told you it takes about 20 minutes for this tank to to dilute out enough where I'm ready to start again but sometimes I'm out here for like a full hour so it's starting to get hot here and I got my RGS in there it's not ready to be changed yet but I want to put down some defects all right no problem just gonna change this out here and I always remind you this you don't have to wear gloves with these products they're not gonna hurt you whoa I just don't want it all over me now you see why the uh, <laughs> Kalinga's getting so nice and crazy here. Look at this, all over me. Learning curve, right? But hey, if you don't have brown stains on your clothes, you're not really doing it right. Okay, so now what I can do, take my dethatch. You should never fill on the lawn. I'm doing it, but you shouldn't. Put in some dethatch. Mmm, yummy. This is my ortho with my John Perry Boo Boop modification. Turn this on. Now I'm double pumping. I got RGS in here, and I got dethatch in here. Oh, <laughs> paint that black, Bubba. That's a double pumper right there, brother. You don't want to mess with that. Hard to do it one-handed, though. Now you know something's bothering me. I'm seeing a lot of moths flying up here while I'm walking through here, and I'm worried about mosquitoes possibly. I think I got a solution for that. Hang on. So remember, I've still got RGS loaded in there. Now I'm gonna treat for insects. And I just realized I don't have on long pants, so when you do this, wear long pants. One other thing, you wanna make sure you have a backflow preventer. I'll put the, there's another name for these, but backflow preventer. You want one of those on there because it can happen that this can back up and it'll go up and it'll get into your household pipes. And I've heard stories of people where they're using one of these and they don't have a backflow prevention um, apparatus on there and they end up getting fertilizer coming out of their faucets in their bathroom or whatever. So you do want a backflow preventer on there. It doesn't come with the unit, but you can get these at Home Depot for just like $2. Now, after you've been spraying for a while, sometimes you'll look at that and go, well, because you know, it was super brown in the beginning and it looks white now or clear. So you're like, I don't know, man. I don't really know how long I've been going. This will especially happen if you've been spraying out of the same tank over a couple days, which will happen often. You'll be like, I don't know if there's anything still coming out there. Should I change it? How do I know? And, uh, and so that's where I recommend you always do the white bucket test, basically this. So I can see brown liquid, we're still loaded. So even though it looks clear, when you put it in that white bucket, you can see you're still loaded. And this is usually when I'll go back then and water everything in real good, you know, cause it's obvious I still have stuff coming out, but I'm coming to the end because it's not, you know, as visually as thick and brown as it was. So this is when I just water it in. You don't have to do this, but I'm just looking for more reasons to stay out here and spray and pray. So let's get it watered in real good, gents. Now there may be times when you do the white bucket test and it's not brown and you know you haven't been spraying very long so something's up so that's when you can look here at the tube and if this tube is clear you can't see the stuff through it then that tells you nothing's coming through and that'll happen sometimes again once you spray like for say 10 minutes then you leave you come back a couple days later stuff can settle to the bottom so if that happens what i do is i just tip it on its side and what that does is it gets everything on the bottom to uh to move up because remember there's constant pressure being pushed down in there there's a water stream being pushed down in there but sometimes the stuff can build up on the bottom so just by turning it on its side that'll get everything flowing again so you can go as much or as little with this as you want i obviously went overkill today because of the fact that i'm showing you guys this but this is good so let me just show you now a better setup so that was my first setup and i made some mistakes with it the second setup is much cleaner and i actually like it a lot better one thing I gotta do before I show you the setup because I work on it back here, is I gotta give this a cut. I'm gonna enjoy the mow with my new Toro Super Recycler Black. Real quick, if you wanted to see the John Deere tractor here in action on the St. Aug, I'm not gonna be able to show you that. I'll show you in the back where it's not gonna matter quite as much, but this thing only goes to four inches as heavy as it is it'll scout my main lawn. So I'd have to, if I was gonna use 
this tractor as my primary daily driver, I would have to train my St. Aug a little bit lower than normal, which could be done, but I'm not willing to go through that pain. So again, this isn't primarily used for here anyway, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut the back Pro Vista a little bit for you, because that can go a little bit lower, just so you can see it in action, even though it's on a super small patch. See that? It just scalps the heck out of it. And look, that's at the highest setting, look. So, and you can see in there, no scalping. And that's where I mowed with the Super Recycler. But even if I mowed with the zero turn, it goes to four and a half. So when you put the weight on it, it gets down to four. Whereas this only goes to four, so you can see it scalps. So Pro Vista back here behind a fence had to take one for the team so you guys could see. I'm not knocking the John Deere, but hey, I mean, if you have St. Augustine grass, that's something that you're gonna have to consider. Good news for me, I'm using this on Zoysia and Bermuda at the church, so it won't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish scalping the Pro Vista. It'll, it'll recover. We're gonna hit it with some Humic 12 today. That'll help it. care who you are it's painful to have to witness something like that let alone be a part of it but I said to show you okay so this is my second setup and you can see much cleaner now, it hasn't been here as long but um, I actually took some time and set this one up a lot better now in the kit come these little shutoff valves and they help keep everything from backing up. Now you'll see I still do have a uh, backflow preventer on here, but these right here make all the difference in keeping these closed and open, especially when you go to fill it, you close them. And then that way nothing really spills out from around here or not as much when you go to refill this. So that's one thing. I also trimmed the tubes to be a little bit more clean coming in here this way. But the other thing I did is I attached this. This is an Australian company hose link. They actually sent me this. They sponsor Ben from Lawn Tips as well. He's used these before. Um, it's kind of big and atrocious, but it does serve the purpose because I can fold it back against the wall there, right? And pull it out. But the biggest thing is it just flows nice. And you'll see when I use it, retracts the hose back up in there real nice, keeps everything nice and clean. So that setup there has proven to be much cleaner for me overall and then I do have this splitter on here that way I can still use just regular water you know by closing this one off and opening that one then I can just use my regular water for the pool or whatever and then here hook up for the hook up for the easy flow I'll link this hose link below again it's it's giant but it is much cleaner of a setup folds back out of the way and so far it's worked well a lot of plastic pieces on the inside i've been using it for about three months nothing seems to have broken or anything like that um so it's one of those things there's a bunch of these retractable hose deals on amazon so i i don't know that this one's any better than the others but like i said it's worked well for me and i have had no problems with it and this is the nozzle or gun or whatever that came with it and i you know it works well too these right here disconnect easily you just push that in and pull it out see that mess no mess no muss, no fuss. This one is definitely ready to be emptied. You'll see it's probably almost all clear. Yeah, see? Because I've sprayed out of that a lot. Oh, see? Little junk on the bottom there. Whew. Okay. That just shows you some stuff settles on the bottom. Now, because of the mess we just made in the back, I'm definitely going with some deep thatch. We're in the 80s here, so plenty of heat. And then because I love it, some Humic 12. Remember the dark one goes in the blue and the clear one goes in the green. Turn these on. Ooh, she's humming. Ready? 
see it going through the line. Yeah, feeding through. I want to say this is uh, 75 feet long. I'll put it in the description. But that's the thing, though. With this, you're stuck with whatever the link. You're stuck with whatever the uh, length is. But it just so happens to be long enough for me. So look, this just pulls out real nice. So I pulled it out here and now you see it stopped. Now what I'll do is spray and I'll give it a little tug and it'll retract as I walk. See, and that just keeps everything clean. I don't have to spray the hose. I Hose management is much easier and so that's why I like this setup. So there you go guys, lots of new ways to spray and pray. And I hope that, you know, maybe this will be helpful for some. Again, if you're a beginner, I wouldn't necessarily go for this, but if you're somebody that doesn't mind tinkering stuff, messing with it, you see everything works pretty flawlessly for me here now, but it took me a while to get to that point. So with that, I hope that this has been helpful to you. As always, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are, and I hope that the sun is shining on you. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the lawn. <music>